so this is a uh, cabinet x-ray system I picked up on eBay. It's a Factotron DX50, a small cabinet x-ray system normally used for uh, medical biopsy imaging. However, it's going to be repurposed for use on circuitry analysis and reverse engineering. So some of the characteristics of this is that, uh, first of all, this is a microfocus unit. So it has a microfocus x-ray tube with around a 20 micron spot size. Now the significance of that is in comparison to a uh, x-ray tube that's not a microfocus unit, such as a dental x-ray tube, the small spot size means there's very low parallax error as you get further and further away from the flat panel detector, which is um, imaging the x-rays. So for example, this would allow you to take a sample and move it closer and closer to the tube and it will still remain in focus. Unlike when you're getting a dental x-ray, they'll put the sensor in your mouth and they'll put it right up against your teeth. So there's minimal parallax error and then they have a standoff distance for the actual x-ray tube. In this system, that's not required and you can actually use that standoff distance to zoom in and out, uh, sort of akin to an x-ray microscope. So, what I so two of the things that we're going to be looking at today, uh, we're going to go over an overview of the system. We're going to do some imaging and a radiation survey to confirm that the uh, shielding on this is still operating normally. So here we have um, an Altera CPLD development board with a MAX-2 CPLD. And in the bottom of this unit, there's a uh, Hawamatsu flat panel detector uh, X-ray sensor. It uses a uh, direct depositing of cesium iodide onto the uh, onto a, uh, either a CMOS or a CCD sensor. Now this one specifically is the Hawamatsu uh, C9730DK-11. It's st similar to the standard uh, DK-10 stock model, except the active area of the sensor is in a different physical place of the plate, and the ports are on a different side. So we'll take the sample and we'll put it on the sensor. And this, uh, the cabinet x-ray unit has a very convenient rotatable shield door. And you'll see it also has an interlock system, so once you close the door, the door closed and ready light will come on. So this unit will only go up to 35 keV, so a rather thin stainless steel door, it's about a sixteenth of an inch thick, will effectively screen out all the x-rays at this particular energy. Now if you'll notice it says that for this device, uh, the general radiation standard is that it should be below uh, 0.5 milliram per hour, two inches from any surface of the device. So we'll close the system and we'll program the exposure at uh, 35 keV. And we're going to put in a 10 second exposure for the x ray generator. We're only going to take a two second exposure on the camera. The 10 seconds will give us enough time to take a radiation survey. So, in that note, we'll bring over the trusty little Model 18 and turn the audio on. And we'll take a check source and verify that the probe is in fact working. And you can see that it is. And I'll take the check source away, put it back in its shield. And we'll and initiate the x-ray and it's going to go configure the machine over the link. We're going to hold the program two inches from the shield door. You can see some uh, counts from the x-ray and it's holding at around 350 counts per minute and that's on a um, Lidlum 44-9 uh, flat panel uh, micro, mica windowed probe. You can see the uh, imaging of the circuit board has popped up. But let's do some calculations on the radiation dose first. Uh, the 44-9 is a sensitivity of 3,300 counts per, mil per minute per millirem per hour. Um, that is, of course, calibrated at a, with a cesium-137 source at 40 keV or thereabouts. And we're running this at uh, 30 keV. Um, we'll see that the sensitivity curves for the probe indicate that 
the response normalized to this cesium 137 is actually four times the indicated rate. So if we punch in 350 counts per minute divided by 3,300 counts per minute per milligram per hour divided by four, which is the normalized sensitivity, we'll see that the x-rays around two inch, uh, x-ray leakage around the two inches from the device is actually 0 .0, around 0 0.026 uh, milliram per hour, so that's a 26 uh, micro, um, 26 um, microgram per hour uh, compared to the normal background, which is typically in order of uh, five to 10 um, microgram per hour based on naturally occurring radioactive material, um, the cosmic ray sources, et cetera. So this is barely above background and uh, substantially less than the uh, regulatory dose limits for X-ray sources. So that's um, it's a very good shielding on the cabinet unit. So as you see, they've taken great care on the system that not only does it have a sliding closing door, it also has a re-entrant uh, profile, so there is no a uh, possibility of direct x-ray scattering from like the target plates out because it would have to scatter several times before it would actually come out to the user. And they have the uh, re-entrant notches here where the door closes and then they have that door interlock switch so there's no way to actually engage the x-ray source while the door is open. So let's take a look at what we have on this image here. So there is the Altera CPLD and if we contrast correct that, that is actually what the chip looks like. You see the outline of the surface mount package. Uh, the silicon die, you can actually see the bond wires connecting from the metal pins to the silicon die itself, and then the solder and the traces. So the next step will actually take advantage of the fact that this is a microfocus x-ray source to give this some effective zoom. So we'll take a thin wall plastic container and place it on top of the sensor to use to give it some standoff distance. And we'll place the circuit board on top of that. And we will retake the measurement. And while we retake that measurement, we'll also switch to an air ion chamber take a secondary measurement, we'll take the beta shield off because of course this is very low energy x-rays and also we will take a dosimeter and we'll actually put it inside the x-ray cavity, x-ray chamber. So we'll initiate that, we'll put this right up against, you can hear the, uh, the dosimeter on the inside alarming but you can see that outside the sealed door, there's almost no dose, and you can also see the x-ray lights uh, were on. So this, this is on the most sensitive scale. It's the scale window is from 0 to 50 uh, milligram per hour, and it is not even climbing off the zero sets. Very good. Okay, and on the image here, now we can see that it's actually substantially zoomed in compared to the previous photo. So if we take a look at that previous image of the CPLD, we can see that this was before layout of the boards. You can see the headers, etc. Now, zoomed in, the CPLD image fills up almost the entire screen, or a good portion of it. And it's a lot clearer. You can see the bond wires a lot clearer, the silicon dye, etc. Let's also take a look at the dosimeter so we can see that going to absorb dose, it's reading for 10 second exposure, 2.96 uh, millirem. Of course, it should be noted that these dosimeters are, um, have internal shielding. They're designed mostly for nuclear radiation, so they do not go down to this 35 uh, kV level, so, there's, so this dose, recorded dose, is inaccurate. Since the, and typically these will um, bottom out around 40 to 60 kV. But as we can see from the radiation survey around the edge, around the edges, 
there's almost no leakage. And now we'll remove everything from the detector and take a flat field image. Turn audio on again. Configure up. X-ray tube and up around the cabinets. It's even lower, maybe 100 to 200 counts per minute uh, than it is around the seams of the door. And that uh, residual um, around 26 um, micro uh, rem per hour around the seams is due to some residual scattering. Uh, even though there, it has to take several bounces to get out. There is always that small, small amount of residual scattering, which is barely above background. So let's take a look at the flat field image. Right now there is no flat field image correction in the software. I wrote the operating software for the x-ray device in MATLAB. Um, there are two different parts of the software. One drives the x-ray generator. That's through an RS-232 link. It just uses ASCII characters to program exposure time, energy, um, and to query device status. And then the second interface is the USB interface for the flat panel sensor. That uh, Hamamatsu provides um, the interface for that. It's a DCAM API. You can download it online. It's important to note that if you have a 64-bit operating system, you should get the uh, DCAM API uh, version 15.10.4787 not the newest version, which is the 18.11.5660. Uh, uh, the newer 